Welcome back. This is part two of this lesson. We're going to continue immediately from the end of part one. So let's get started. Now that we've created all of those, we need to go ahead and install WordPress on our EC2 instance. So move back to instances. By now the instance should be in the running state. Right click, select connect, change it to session manager, and then go ahead and click on connect. And this will allow us to connect into the EC2 instance without worrying about direct network access or having an SSH key pair. Once you're connected, go ahead and type sudo bash and press enter, then type cd and press enter, and then type clear and press enter. And that will just clear the screen to make everything easy to see. Now at this point, there are a lot of commands that you'll need to type in to manually install WordPress. Now you can copy and paste these out of the text instructions for this stage of the demo lesson, but while you're doing so, I want you to imagine that you'd have to type these in one by one, because I want you to get an appreciation for just how long this install would take if you were doing it entirely manually. So first, we need to set some environment variables on this instance with the parameters that we've just stored in Parameter Store. So go ahead and copy all of this set of commands out of this stage's instructions, and this will set environment variables on this instance with values from the parameter store. And again, imagine how long this would take if you had to type all of this manually. Once we've got those variables configured, next we need to just update the operating system on the instance, make sure it's running with all the patches, and just update the package repositories. And we can do that with these two commands. The next set of commands in this stage's instructions install prerequisites. So this is the MariaDB database server, the Apache web server, wget, some libraries, and a stress test utility. So go ahead and paste in the next block of commands to install all of these packages. Make sure that you do press enter on the last command if it doesn't execute automatically because we need to make sure that all of these are installed. Now again, this is something that we will automate later in this demo series, but I want you to have an appreciation for just how long this takes. And then if it doesn't automatically press enter on the last line, just go ahead and press enter to install that final utility. I'll type clear again to clear the screen. And then the next set of commands will start up the web server and the database server and ensure that both of them start up automatically when the instance operating system is first started. So if we restart this instance, both of these services will start up automatically. Again, make sure you press enter on the last command to make sure that, that starts up successfully. So that's the Apache web server and MariaDB that are both started and set to automatically start on operating system boot. Again, I'll clear the screen, and the next command that you'll run sets the root password for the MariaDB database server. So this is MySQL admin, and you're setting the password for the root user, and we're using the environment variable that we created earlier with values taken from the parameter store. So that sets the root password for the local database instance. Next, we're going to download and install WordPress, and we do that with the next block of commands. So this first downloads the WordPress package, it moves into the web root directory, it expands that package and then clears up after itself. So now we have WordPress installed. Again, I'll clear the screen to make it easier to see. This next set of commands replaces some placeholders in the wp-config.php file, which is the configuration for WordPress, and it replaces the placeholders with values taken earlier from the parameter store. So this is how we're configuring WordPress to be able to connect to the local MariaDB database server. The next block of commands that we use will fix up the permissions of all of this directory structure so we don't have any problems accessing these files or any other security issues. Again, make sure you press enter on the last command. And then we're almost done. The last step is to actually create the WordPress database, create the WordPress database user, set the password, and then grant permission on that database to that user. So these are all steps that we need to do because we're using a self-managed MariaDB database instance. So paste in this next block of commands and press enter. So this has created a db.setup file with a number of SQL commands, and then it's used the MySQL utility to run those commands which have created the database, the database user and set permissions and then it's cleared up the temporary file after all of that's been done. 
And at this point, that's all of the configuration needed. We've installed WordPress, we've installed MariaDB, we've started them both up, we've corrected permissions and adjusted the configuration files. Now you've had the ability to copy and paste these commands from the lesson instructions, but imagine if you had to type them in all one by one. It would take much longer and is also something that's prone to many errors. That's something important to keep in mind as we move through this advanced demo. So the next step is to move back to the EC2 console, make sure you've got the WordPress hyphen manual instance selected and then copy down the IP version 4 public IP address into your clipboard and make sure that you do copy the public IP address and don't click on the open address link because that uses HTTPS which we're not using. So go ahead and open that in a new browser tab. Now this is going to take you to the setup screen for WordPress. We're going to perform a quick setup. So under site title, I want you to enter Catagram. Under username, I want you to enter admin. We'll keep things simple. For password, enter the Animals for Life password that we've been using in previous steps. Under email, go ahead and enter a fake email address and then click on install WordPress. That'll perform the final installation steps, at which point you can click on login. You'll need to enter the admin username together with the password that you've just chosen, and then click on login. So this is the WordPress dashboard, and this suggests that our WordPress application is working absolutely fine. So to test it, just go to posts. We're going to delete the default post of Hello World. Once done, go ahead and click on add new. You can just close down this welcome to block editor dialog. Under title, use the best animal and then S because we might have more than one animal and then just put an exclamation mark at the end for effect. Click on the plus underneath that title, select gallery, click on upload, select some animal pictures to upload. If you don't have any, you can go to Google Images and download some cat or dog or gerbil or guinea pig pictures, anything that you want, chickens, snakes, just select a couple of animal pictures to upload and then click on open. And then once they've uploaded, you can go ahead and click on publish and then publish again. And this will publish this post. And what it's doing in order to publish it is it's uploading the images into a local image store that's called WP-Content. And in addition to that, it's storing the metadata for this post into the local MariaDB database. So, so there are two different places that data is stored, the local content store as well as the database. So keep that in mind as we move on throughout this lesson. At this point, click on view post. Just verify the post loads, it does. So that means everything's working as expected. Now the configuration that you've just implemented has a number of important limitations. The first is that the application and database have been built manually, which takes time and doesn't allow automation. It's been slow and annoying, and that's very much the intention. Additionally, the database and the application are on the same instance. Neither of them can scale without the other. The database of the application is stored on an EC2 instance, and that means that scaling in or out risks data in this database. The application media, so the content, is stored also local to the instance in a folder called wp-content. And this means, again, any scaling events in or out risks this media. Additionally, customer connections are directly to an instance, which prevents us from doing any form of scaling, automatic healing, or any health checks. One final part about WordPress that isn't commonly known is the IP address of the instance is actually hard-coded into the database. Now where this starts to exhibit problems is when running inside AWS because EC2 instances don't have static IP addresses. If we go back to the EC2 console, right-click on this instance and then stop the instance, Remember, a stop and start of an instance force the change of the public IP address of the instance. So restarting it isn't enough, you need to stop and then start. 
Notice how in my case the IP address for this instance is 54.85.210.127. Watch what happens when the instance fully moves into a stopped state. First it loses this public IP address and it moves into the stop state. If I right click and then start, that will take a few moments, but what will happen is once it's fully started, it will have a different IP version for public address. So now if I copy that IP address into my clipboard, move back to the tab where the website was previously open, and then open this new IP address in a different browser tab, and note how it doesn't load. Even though the IP address is correct, it's not loading our WordPress website. The reason for that is the application is hard-coded with the IP address that was used to install WordPress. And so what it's attempting to do now is reference the old IP address. It's trying to contact the previous EC2 instance. Now this is crucial because it prevents us from scaling the application. If we create new EC2 instances, they'll all point back at this instance. Even if we fix the database and content issues, we need to resolve the ability of WordPress to scale, and don't worry, we'll look at that later in this demo series. For now, that's everything you needed to do in stage one of this advanced demo. You've manually created a WordPress application with the application and database running on the same instance. In stage two, you're going to automate this process. So go ahead, complete this part of the demo series, and when you're ready, I look forward to you joining me in stage two.